You know, it's easy to think and to say, this is a wasteland. It's all going to hell in a handbasket. Well, today I'm here to give us a reality check. You know, a reality check is when things seem one way, but they're really another. Things the way they really are. And here's how things really are. God's kingdom is advancing. The kingdom of heaven is coming. That is real. That is powerful. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus spoke about God's kingdom coming very often, and he usually did that in the form of a story, or we call them parables. Matthew 13, 34 and 35, give us this insight. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Jesus was never without a story. And he used those stories to speak to people's experience and to their maturity and what they understood. He told parables of farming and baking and uh, shepherding and housekeeping so that people connected with those stories. They were never too obvious, but they challenged people to think more deeply about things. Listen to this also in chapter 13, backing up to verse 10. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So parables didn't always clarify things. Sometimes they raised questions, and often they were unsettling. People would hear them. Maybe they would think, what is he saying? Is he speaking to me? Was that about me? What's this all about? And it also revealed whether their hearts were open. The disciples were. They would come to Jesus later and say, what was that about? What did that mean? They were interacting with it. They had an open heart. And that's the kind of heart that we want, one that's open, one that's listening, changing, growing, one that's open to receive what God has for us. So, here is our reality check. Here's what Jesus was saying about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a farmer took out into his field and planted. And even though it was the tiniest of mustard seeds, the tiniest of seeds, it would spring up, it would grow, and it would overtake all the plants, growing 12 to 15 feet tall. Birds would come and nest in that plant of that mustard seed. Well, the kingdom of God had small beginnings, but it is advancing. It will not be thwarted. We cannot stop it. We cannot hold it back. In the end, God's kingdom will take place over all other kingdoms. It will take place over physical kingdoms. Whether it's a country, a nation, a kingdom, a political system, God's kingdom is advancing and it will overtake all other physical kingdoms. And it will also overtake and domineer and thwart all spiritual kingdoms. Yes, we have an enemy of the soul, Satan. And we know that he walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The scripture calls him the God of this age. It also says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against 
evil in high places. God's kingdom will advance against spiritual kingdoms as well. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman takes and puts in her flour and then it spreads throughout all the dough. Now, if you're not familiar with yeast and how it works, when you put it in the flour, it begins to eat up the sugar and it creates gas and it makes little gas bubbles that causes the dough to rise so that you can bake the loaf. Like yeast, the kingdom of God is transforming. Once it gets started, once it begins, you can't stop it. And the transformational power of the kingdom it can be seen. It can be seen in our lives. It can be seen in the lives of people who have been changed because they had an encounter with the King, with Jesus Christ, with God. That is what the kingdom of heaven is like. I think we can all think about those kind of people. People who are just struggling, having a very difficult time in life, making some terrible life decisions. And then their life was changed because God came in and it just gave them a 180. It completely reversed their life. I know that that's the way it is in my life. Jesus also said that the kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure. A man goes out into the field and he finds a hidden treasure. And then when he finds it, he hides it again. He goes off. And he sells everything that he has in order to purchase that field. The kingdom of heaven is like a pearl. There's a merchant who looks for the perfect pearl all of his life. Then one day he finds it. He goes out and he sells everything that he owns. And he goes out and he purchases that pearl. There is nothing more valuable and more beautiful than God's kingdom. And when you're searching for it, wherever you're searching, whether you're searching for it in meditation, whether you're searching for it in just living a good life, whether you're searching for it in another religion, whether you're searching for it in just pleasing yourself and finding as much pleasure as you possibly can, or you're looking for it in alcohol and drugs, wherever you're searching, when you discover the truth, the reality of the kingdom of God, it is worth sacrificing all for. Just like the merchant did, just like the man in the field did. We sacrifice it all. We deny ourselves, take up the cross daily, and follow Christ. What will it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? There's no profit in that. The kingdom of God is valuable and beautiful and transformative. The kingdom of heaven is like a net. Fishermen take it out. They cast the net, and they get a large catch of fish. They bring it back in. They separate the good fish, put them in baskets. The bad fish, they throw away. At the end of time, the angels will come, and they'll separate the wicked from the righteous. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord distinguishes between the children of light and the children of darkness. Not all will inherit the kingdom of God unless you're born again, born from above, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And we are born from above when we give Christ our whole entire life. We turn to Him from our wicked sinful ways and embrace Him, embrace the cross and all that He has done for us. Here is a key spiritual insight. The kingdom of God is more valuable, beautiful, and transforming 
than anything else. It's here now, and it's still coming. It's here now because kingdom life has been ignited within us. The Holy Spirit within us enriches and transforms our life. He's changing us, transforming us from the inside in our inner person outward to the things that we do. And the kingdom of God is still coming. We anticipate that Christ will return and he will establish his kingdom, his literal kingdom. He came once. We know that. We have historians, both Christian and secular historians, who acknowledge the life of Christ, who acknowledge the death of Christ, and who acknowledge that his followers said that he was resurrected. We know that. And we as Christians know that he will come again. He'll make all things right. The kingdom of God will advance. And we encourage each other with these words. I encourage you with these words. This is the reality check. Regardless of how things seem around us, the kingdom of God is advancing. Remember Matthew 6.33? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. We are subjects of the king. And we live like it. We live in a way that displays and reflects the value, the beauty, and the transformative richness of the kingdom. And that is a life-giving reality check.